Hi, welcome to my channel, where I share my knowledge on programming the DJI Tello drones with Python. Today, we're going to begin a series where we're going to program a drone controller similar to our previous one. But this one's a little extra cool because it's going to have the functionalities of a search and rescue drone. Now, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to do this, we're going to start with a framework from a previous video where we built our first TKinter drone controller. Particular part three, we worked on this module here, tkinter keyboard controller.py. Now, we're not gonna import anything else into this module, but we're gonna go ahead and do a few things in the initialization. Well, specifically, we're gonna add a new button to switch between our camera views. And then we also need a way for our class to know what the camera direction is. I find a Boolean variable is the best way to indicate this. So we'll implement a Boolean variable in our initialization and we'll title it camera down. And we're gonna set it to false originally since when we launch this program, the drone's uh, default camera directions forward. So if we press the button, we want that variable to be set to true and then have the camera down method called from our Tello class. Now beyond this, we're gonna do a little bit of a different placement method in our run application see before we used the dot pack placement method now this is nice for a quick approach but since we're going to be implementing more buttons and our video stream is going to change sizes it'd be best to switch to our grid formatting so that we can specify an explicit position for these different widgets such that it doesn't really change much depending on the sizings so with that change the grid method also occurs in our video stream method. In particular, we have to pack the label again so that it shows as a real-time feed. So we'll be replacing this with a grid also. Now beyond this, we're gonna have to look at adding a new method. Like I said, this new method will go ahead and be activated through our button press, and it'll have to take that Boolean variable and what its value is, and determine from that value if it should set the camera direction to be forward or downward. Now, that's uh, hard to understand just looking here we're going to go ahead and go into PyCharm but before I do I'd like to note that this is all going to be on GitHub so you can go ahead and clone it copy and paste it whatever you want to do to get it off there run it in your own local environment and see the magic so let's get into PyCharm here we are all right so I've got the project folder titled search and rescue drone and we have our previous flight commands module with no changes simply took it from our previous repos flight controller don't worry about that one now looking into the module itself like i said we're going to start in the initialization it's where i've outlined step one so let's go ahead and eliminate that so we can see better step one we got to create a parameter a new one to determine if the camera direction is set to the bottom camera we're going to call it self.camera down and we're going to set it to false now false indicates that the camera direction is not set to down, inferring that it's forward right now. We're gonna use that in the method we define below. You might see it here. We're not gonna go into that until last because next we're gonna go ahead and create another button as part of this GUI. We're gonna go ahead and put the text to be switch camera direction and we're gonna tie the Lambda command as we did with the takeoff land button, but we're gonna bind it to this new method, which we'll explain a little more later. So moving out of our initialization, that's step one. Step two, we're going to go into our run application method. We want to rewrite this to use the grid method for adding all widgets to our GUI. So we're going to format our overall window as a three by three matrix. This way we can have our takeoff land button, our button for switching cameras, an empty grid, and then right in the middle of it all, our video stream. This will allow for the window resizing when we switch directions to not affect the formatting, but just affect the overall window size, which you'll see here when we demo. So which buttons did we have packed that we need to grid? Well, we have to grid the takeoff land button. We also have to grid our input frame, which you don't really know it's there unless you programmed the keyboard bindings with me before. Now, we also have to grid our new camera button and lastly, capture label. So I want the takeoff land button to be on the third row. So we'll have one, two, three. But with uh, a lot of ways we refer to things with computers, zero index is number one. 
So we'll go ahead and call it 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Now with that, we want the takeoff button to be in the middle column in the last row. So it's right in the center of our bottom. So we go ahead and grid it by specifying as such. Now after this, we have our keyboard binding, nothing to change there, but we do want to change how we put our input frame on the window to use grid as well. Now, since this is an invisible frame, I want it to be off in one of the columns we're not using. That will be column two if we're going by the zero, one, two kind of approach. So we'll specify that as column two and we'll go ahead and put it in the middle row because why not? And we have to set the focus. We did that previously. Again, don't touch that line. Now we're going to grid the camera direction button so that it's in the zeroth column and in the middle as well. You'll see how this all looks. I might put it up on the screen so you can see it as we're discussing this to have a better understanding. And lastly, we want our video stream label directly in the center. That's why we're doing a three by three grid. So with that, we also have to go to our video stream method because we do some uh, packing in there. In particular, right here. You can see previously, we packed the uh, capture label using the dot pack placement method. Let's go ahead and do that and grid it with the same exact configurations so that it's in the center of our matrix. I'll put grid there and that's that. Step two is done. Now, step three, I believe, was to work on our method. No, actually, I didn't bring this one up yet. So we've got our Boolean variable. We have our button for setting the camera direction. Now, while the method will be handling our logic, we don't want to go into this yet because we have our previous knowledge on programming to tell our drones that we could stream from the bottom camera. Now, if you watched my previous video, we saw that the bottom camera is a infrared sensitive um, sensor uh, camera. I don't know the exact words, but either way, so what we get returned is a grayscale image and it is not in the same dimensions as our normal video stream. This is returned in a 240 by 320 resolution image. But what we read it in as is our full dimensions of our standard four camera frames. So we have to crop this out. Now, we wanna do everything in the video stream method that deals with our video. So after we get our frame and we resize it to our desired height and width, then we're gonna go ahead and check if that camera down parameter is true. See, if it's true, then we wanna do that cropping we just talked about. And we do it as such. We take the good portion out of our overall frame that contains our bottom camera's view, and we set that to the frame. And that's it. So that's it for the video stream method. Now let's go up to code out our logic for our new method. We're gonna go ahead and do this right after takeoff and land method, or right before step four. So define a method for setting the camera direction. We're gonna go ahead and call this set camera direction. It only takes in the self as a parameter because it's a class method. And here we're gonna do an if block to check if the self dot camera param down parameter is true. So if that parameter is true, then that means that we are currently in down vision. We are receiving our bottom camera stream. So remember if we're calling this method with our button, and set the true, well, that means we wanna switch the camera. So if it's true, we hit that button, then we wanna go ahead and set it back to false. And why do we wanna set it to false? Well, for our video stream method, so it knows to return our video frames as the standard format of our forward camera. And then we have to call the Tello classes set video direction method. And we wanna pass self.drone, oh, we wanna pass self.drone that camera forward. Because again, if camera down is true, that means we want to switch to camera forward. Now, if this is not the case, we're going to go ahead and set the camera down to true because it's one or the other, true or false. So if it's not true, then it was false. So we want to set it back to true so that we know we want to receive our video stream from the bottom camera. And we have to let the drone know this by calling the set video direction method. And instead of passing camera forward, we're going to pass camera downward. Now, I really hope that wasn't too much because we're just about done here. Now, we already tied our button, its command to a Lambda with this method we just discussed. That's what's called. Now, 
we have to handle one special case before we consider this to be done. And I found this out through testing actually. So consider the case that you're using this controller and you terminate the program when the camera direction is set to down. This will cause issues when you go to run the program again if you don't reboot the drone by turning it on and off. Now, what issues occur? Well, it's camera direction will be still set to down vision. So when we launch our program again, our video stream will be from our bottom camera, but its dimensions will be our standard forward camera size. Now, and that's not really an issue. You can press the button a couple times to get it to come back, but the variable will be off the whole time. You really will have to reset the program, reboot the drone at that point. So how do we handle this? That's with our cleanup method. So let's go down to that. Past our video stream, we have our method for cleaning up resources where we try and we print that we're cleaning them up. And this is where we add one additional check. We're gonna check again if that self.camera down parameter is true. Because if it's true, we wanna ensure that our drone's camera direction is reset to the forward vision so that we can circumvent that error that we just discussed. So if it's true, we're gonna go ahead and just set the video direction to forward before we go ahead and call our drone.in and our root.quit. And that's that. And now, we are ready to launch it. So this is just the beginnings of our search and rescue drone. Let's see what it does and make sure it works good. Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit run on our program and we're gonna demo it and test it out to see if we can fly my drone up overhead, click my set camera direction button to set it to down vision and see my face from underneath the drone. So I'm already connected to the drone. Let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and hit run. And there we have it. Now, there is our GUI. So titled the window search and rescue drone. We have our switch camera direction button, which we'll go ahead and just test it. And you see it resizes nicely because we used that grid placement option or method. Now let's switch back to forward camera. Let's take off. button again if we want to and you can see that lovely skinny pop box that I've had forever and that's all there is to it so now if we exit it out with the camera direction set to dial camera still then we would find um, our issue is resolved because we had that additional if block in our cleanup method so if you want to explore that further go ahead and check it out try it out yourself like I said you can go straight to github on the repo, download the file straight to your computer, and then you can run it and have a search and rescue drone controller start, because this is just the start. Next, we're gonna look how to add face detection over either camera view, and then we'll see on moving this to maybe a color detector to help find people missing with certain color shirts. Now, if you like what these thoughts are and uh, what's maybe gonna be coming next, please like, share, comment, subscribe, Hit this notification bell I'm hearing about 